Glass Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No, no. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. The ladies are all in pinkies and reds. Welcome to DBS. Good to see everyone. Uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. We do want to talk about this weekend because there was some violence across the country in Houston. A man shot three of his neighbors after he set fire to their apartment complex. He was later then killed by police. In Oregon, a gunman with an AR-15 shot two people dead at a grocery store. And in Detroit, a man fired randomly at people over a two and a half hour period period, killing two before he was finally stopped by authorities. So all of this continued. Violence is leading Ozzy Osbourne and his wife Sharon to rethink living in America. So in an interview with The Guardian, Ozzy said, quote, I'm fed up with people getting killed every day. He says he doesn't want to die in America and says it's time to return to his home country. Sharon echoed his comments, saying America has changed so drastically. It isn't the United States of America at all. Nothing Nothing is united about it. I do want to make it clear they are probably the least likely of people to get shot in America. There is a, of course, there is a possibility because it's everywhere, but of course, um, it's usually people in po impoverished areas and people who are younger than Sharon and Ozzy. What do you think about this, Erica? Well, it must be nice to have that as an option to just leave just after say. you've uh, profited off of living in America. I mean, I've had this conversation a lot. My husband is a, a Canadian, Canadian citizen as well as a U.S. citizen. And when the conversation comes up about should we possibly live in Canada, um, my answer is always unless there's a reason that we have to move as a family, then no. Because what am I doing by just escaping? because I can, and then leaving my friends and family and everyone that I care about behind to just fend for yourself? No. Do you see why he would want to leave? I can see people saying that I, I, I'm scared. Obviously, this is crazy. I'm not going to say it's not crazy. Right. The world that we're living in right now makes no sense. However, just to say, well, I'm out because I'm in a privileged position, right. Right. just amplifies the privilege. Right. How do you feel about it, Lynn? I mean, there's definitely been a rise in violence across the country. Even in New York, some of my friends that easily took the subway to go to work will not get yeah, on sure. it anymore. And that's like the main mode of transportation for most people. It just because across the country, and especially in major cities, it's like way more violence than there ever was before. Um, but I do think, you know, the person coming from selling an $18 million mansion, which is Ozzy Osbourne, is really in a position where, you know, you have, like Erica said, you made so much money here and you're, you have the luxury of selling that many millions of mansion to leave. Your wife was on a talk show that really was part of representing our culture every single day, talking about mostly That's American true. issues, and now you're just out of here. It feels like more issues, plus he has looming health issues. Um, so maybe the reason they should discuss in further detail is like why they're actually leaving versus just the violence, because this really hasn't come to their front door from what I have been reading. Yeah, it's interesting. I understand what they're saying. I see what you guys are saying, absolutely. It kind of feels a little tone deaf when they're like, we can't live here anymore. Let's take our cash and leave. But I also feel like I know a couple of expats that live in Europe and they say the everyday like hum of worry of going to a mall going to a movie theater going to a baseball game is just like all lower because there isn't that threat that it might happen at any point so I understand that too I just think it was probably said a little weird okay oh is that it <laughs> I thought we had another story Okay, <laughs> coming up on DBL, you know him from hilarious roles in Office Space and Talladega Nights. We talk with actor Gary Cole about his latest project. Plus, we're learning more about Donald Trump and his classified documents in Mar-a-Lago. Will he be indicted? Stay tuned. Closed captioning provided by... I think it is one of those stories we're all gonna be like, what? So raised yeah. you. Why am I right all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another well, week yeah. of Jeff's Muscle. Well, am I going crazy?
Okay, you're up. Yeah. All right. What are we talking about here? The UK is not much better, a lot of people say. Um, says Puffy Joe. UK actually has a lot of stabbings, which is interesting. Um, A15 used in Bend, Oregon. It's funny, uh, Oregon, uh, haven't heard a lot of violence over in Oregon, and we're hearing a lot coming from there. Detroit as well. Um, we're gonna have to add another story to the show from trending. Which one do you like the best? Do you like J Lo's wedding thing being stolen, Pretty or do you funny. like the VMAs? I like the VMAs. I like the VMAs. Okay. VMAs. One minute. So what's coming up? So we have the Video Music Awards, and it's MTV. Taylor won. Three years. Love that woman. Anyway, she announced new music. So if you're interested as a Swifty, it's called Midnights, and it comes out on Kim Kardashian's birthday. Burn. And um, Lizzo had a really great moment as well. Nicki Minaj was there. She won the Vanguard Award. Um, and it was just nice to see, like, an award show again. And Taylor went full sex kitten, which I really appreciated. Um, and, um, yeah, Lizzo said to all those out there hating on me, I, I can't use some of the language, but it was like, I'm winning. <laughs> yeah, she was. She really was. And Jean-Paul Gaultier. Welcome back. All right, there's new fallout from the FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago. There's going to be a review of all the classified documents that were found and seized according to the Director of National Intelligence. They're going to assess the national security risks to see if these documents got out and what it means. Speaking of which, the very heavily redacted affidavit was released on Friday and revealed some of the documents that were turned over back in January relating to spies and operating overseas. Meantime, Senator Lindsey Graham warned that there would be riots in the streets if Trump gets indicted over all of this. So what do you think? Is Lindsey Graham right? We've never indicted a sitting president again. Let's play it out and say some spies, their locations. We also had a New York Times article saying a lot of our spies had been located somehow and we didn't know why. Let's say something happens and he gets indicted. Will there be riots in the streets? Do you agree with your Well, I hope not riots in the streets because Okay, don't, no. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I know, but Fair. I'm tired of, like, because riots in the streets for President Trump and people aligned with him means what happened on January 6th. So that's not anything that I would even want to entertain or have a conversation about. But I do think that transparency in this case, when we've never had anything like this, this is unprecedented, where a president might actually go to jail. Sure. We need full transparency. So if we're going to have transparency with everyone knowing that the raid happened, we should have transparency in seeing exactly why. Okay. And I understand that the FBI and the Justice Department are supposed to be apolitical, so that's their role is to not share too much, but this happening right before the midterms, it feels a little bit like you know, well, like Joe Biden is, is basking in glory thinking this is happening, and Democrats as a whole are just very thrilled about this. So the timing, it just is off-putting to people that are like, why right now when we've had almost two years to kind of sort this out, or we knew these documents were missing at least since February, because that's when they first told President Trump to hand over some of them, sure. which he did. Sure. That's interesting. You think it's a political timing move, and do you think he'll get indicted? I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> I mean, literally, we live in a society <laughs> where it could be torrential rains outside and people will say that it is not raining. It's not raining and the sun shining. Yeah. So I don't know. I really don't know. I, nothing is calculated anymore because so much of it is so nonsensical and fiction that I have a hard time making sense out of nonsense. That's a very fair point. I think that echoes a lot of people and our viewers' statements. I actually agree with Lindsay on this one. And it's someone, you know me, I know. I think there's something called a special master, which I didn't know was real. That's what Trump is asking for to look over everything. I'm fine with crossing every T and dotting every I. And in this case, a former president, you better believe 
believe I want to have make sure someone's there for privilege, executive privilege, so that no one can complain when it does come out that something was overlooked. But if spies are getting out and we're letting people know where they are and it's coming from a former president, he needs to be indicted, in my opinion. Um, actress Sydney Sweeney is calling out critics after she got slammed for a surprise party she threw for her mom. So Sydney posted pictures of her mom's 60th birthday saying, no better way to celebrate my mama than a surprise hoedown. It included a man wearing a blue line t-shirt, her brother posted more photos showing party goers wearing red MAGA style hats, which he did clarify that red make 60 great again because she turned 60. Well, lots of people came for Sydney online and now she's clarifying, tweeting an innocent celebration for my mom's milestone has turned into a absurd political statement, which was not the intention. Please stop making assumptions. Am I really wrong to say that it's not making assumptions wearing like the red MAGA hat. But some people think stuff like that is funny. And, and some people actually voted for President Trump and that's okay also. Totally. Right? People have the option. So if that's her mom's party. Million. Right. Yeah, if, yeah, sure. if that's her mom's party and she's throwing it for them and people are doing what they want, she decided to share it with the world. Like it didn't have to be public. You know, I've been to high profile events. They're like, give up your phone. Your phone you're right. And that's why you don't see many pictures besides Getty images. So if she really wanted it to be something that was just family and friends and not shared to be political. But when they wear a red hat that says make the party great again or make 60 great, obviously that is either playing on the election because you supported it or playing on it as a joke like Larry David did in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Very true. Um, just to get a reaction out of people. So like you put yourself in the situation by letting the world know like this is what's happening at my mom's party. Fair. What do you think, Erica? It, this is just the climate. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you if you're looking for like by volunteering those photos then you are sharing it with people who you believe support you right um, she's riding that line I mean I I was invited to a party a couple years ago and it was like uh, I don't even I basically the party was so like borderline with everybody how people were dressing I was like I'll just see y'all next year <laughs> like I'm not no I'm not. no 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 we're not doing a white trash theme party. Oh. I can't do, I'm, no, I cannot be there. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, because you have to, you have to know, know your audience at all times. Sure, especially when you're super in the public's face. I don't know, for me, the swoosh makes me think, what, Nike immediately. And for me, that red hat represents like a lot of pain for a lot of people, but I also realize it's just, a, <laughs> it could be just a satirical joke on the culture. I just think that red hat brings up fire from both sides. That I mean, was what the whole Curb Your Enthusiasm yes. episode was because Larry David didn't want to talk to anybody. So he wore, so he the, wore the hat and everywhere he went so that people would just leave him the heck alone. Right. And that's the thing. It's like that serious, like it, that device of just a red hat. And some people might have just worn it for the party to right, be funny. Right. Interesting. Let us know what you think. Would you have worn it if you were asked to at a party coming up on DBL? Did you get the memo? We interviewed legendary actor Gary Cole. He's telling us about what was like playing the horrible boss in office space. Stay tuned. Most of us consider the internet an essential resource in our lives. The White House noted last year that Americans pay some of the highest prices in the world to be connected. So Verify viewers Jan and Rebecca emailed us to ask about ads they're seeing online for the Affordable Connectivity Program that claims they can save a lot of money, like this one. The Affordable Connectivity Program, or ACP, provides up to $30 to help eligible households pay for their monthly internet plans. So, let's verify. Can people get discounted internet through the Affordable Connectivity Program? Our sources are the Federal Communications Commission, the White House, and AARP. The Affordable Connectivity Program is run by the FCC and was created in 2021 as part of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. Households that earn less than 200% of the federal poverty line, participate in a benefit or assistance program, or were previously enrolled in a low-income internet program, qualify for a monthly discount of up to $30 on internet service and a one-time discount of up to $100 on a computer or tablet. AARP estimates 100 million people may qualify. The Biden administration says 20 large internet service providers like Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast have agreed to offer eligible households plans that cost $30, meaning they effectively receive their internet for free. So yes, people can get discounted internet through the Affordable Connectivity Program. 
you'll probably be seeing a lot more ads for it in the next few months, too, because the FCC is giving out grants to local groups to help spread the word. The Universal Service Administration Company, an FCC-funded nonprofit, estimates less than one in six eligible households is currently taking advantage of the program. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. Hey there. Remember this guy? He's known as that horrible boss in office space. We're going to need you on a Saturday. And the estranged father in Talladega Nights. And now he's the leader of the NCIS team. Earlier, we spoke with Gary Cole about the show going into its 20th season. Check it out. Gary, what is up, man? Uh, we've been waiting for you. We're happy you're here on DVL, and we got to get right to it. I got to ask you, what was it like to work with Will Ferrell and Talladega Nights? And like, was it as fun as everybody would think it would be? I would say that uh, if I had to pick the most fun I had uh, in front of a camera, that would be on the top of the list. Yeah. Wow. Any favorite scenes? Uh, well, the Cougar is, uh, you know, <laughs> I have an affinity for the Cougar in the car. Uh, and I also enjoy the, uh, I think it's the first time the two characters actually meet after, you know, he was a, uh, a child in the in the, some dingy motel room. Uh, but Will, Will is fantastic. He was just, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was always on my toes because you never knew what was coming. That's what's up. Gary, so happy you're here. I got to tell you, before I go to bed, I watch Veep, I watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, Entourage, and Arrested Development. You're in three of the four of those, Gary. So I see you every time I go to bed. <laughs> but let's talk Curb because it's one of my favorites. You play um, the owner of the Dodgers, and you punch Larry David in the face. <laughs> How did you get to be on that show, Gary? And are you a fan yourself? Yeah, maybe that's not a select club. <laughs> I, you know, I just wound up there. I got a phone call, and I think that usually even people that, you know, the, that are known have to go through some process of reading. I think somehow I bypassed that. I don't know, but I think that was a mistake. I think they were, when I got there, they thought maybe I had, you know, prepared more than I did. But it was daunting because I wasn't used to, you know, I don't come from any, any kind of sketch training or anything like that. And there's absolutely no script. Wow. Right. So wow. Very detailed dialogue or very detailed uh, outline, but that's it. The dialogue just comes as it goes. But it was uh, it's one of my favorite shows as well, so I had, I had a great time. I love it. That's Crazy. awesome. All right, Gary, let's talk about NCIS because you joined during season 19 and the writers included an office space reference. Let's take a look real quick. What I'd give to never have to file another TPS report. You do know it's a TBS report, right? Trans Bureau Synopsis. What did I say? A TPS report. Ah, uh, old habits. Weird. <laughs> oh, How did it make you feel when this little nugget was included in NCIS? Well, when the writers came to me, I said, what do you think of this? I said, I, I'm all in because, you know, I mean, that, that movie's been kind to me. It's kept me on the radar for the last 25 years. So um, I did have to add the coffee cup at the end yes. uh, to make sure everyone knew what we were talking about there. So, uh, but yeah, I, th I thought it worked well. We, we, you know, we brought it up. <laughs> We threw it away, and that was it. Just that still <laughs> yeah. image yeah. makes me laugh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so the 20th season premiere episode of NCIS is a crossover with NCIS Hawaii. Did you get to hang out with the Hawaii cast outside of work? Do you guys all get along? Tell us. We, I never made it to Hawaii myself. Uh, Wilmer and Katrina from our cast uh, were the ones that actually made a couple of trips there, one earlier uh, last season and then for this. So... Anything that I anything that I uh, uh, appeared in that was supposed to be Hawaii, spoiler alert, it was in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> so Gary, NCIS is one of the most watched TV shows ever, and you're in everything. But what was it like being part of the show that's going into its 20th season? Well, it's we're in rarefied territory here. This this show uh, is only uh, in company with Gunsmoke from another era, yeah, and uh, Law and Order uh, SVU. So it's pretty extraordinary that something has been on this long. Um, um, you know, so it, it, that fact is just, you know, it's a great place to go. Some of the people on this crew have been working there 
over 20 years because this show also kind of spun off from another show called JAG, which a lot of the uh, crew members uh, were, were working on before NCIS ever premiered. Gary, what a privilege. Congratulations with your career with Thanks. NCIS. Thank you for joining us. I got a thousand today. more questions for next time. <laughs> come back. Come back. Please. <laughs> Uh, to our viewers, make sure to watch the 20th season premiere of NCIS. It's on Monday, September 19th on CBS, of course. We'll be right back. Congrats, Thanks. Man. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... The Great Resignation prompted many people to look for a new job. But the Federal Trade Commission warns potential workers are at risk of becoming a victim of a fake job posting. The FTC estimates the scams have cost Americans nearly $164 million this year alone. So we used these sources to show you four things to check to avoid an employment scam. The four things are source, content, pay, and requests featured in a job offer. To help you understand what these emails look like, we created a fake job posting based on what our sources say you should look for. First, check the source of the email. Is it from an official company email address or a generic account like Gmail or Yahoo? You'll notice the source of the job offer didn't spell verify correctly. It's missing the E. Scammers hope you'll miss small errors like this. The email also isn't from a specific person, just a generic HR manager. Second, the content. Did the sender spell everything correctly and use the proper name of the company? Perspective is misspelled and they call verify the verified team. The email also doesn't say what the job is for. Third, the pay. Is it consistent with what you'd expect? Scammers often promise easy money for little work, an unusually high salary, or offer to hire you without even doing an interview. It's unrealistic to think a company will contact you unsolicited and offer to pay you $1,000 weekly for doing a few hours of work without even interviewing you. Fourth, the request. The sender wastes no time asking for sensitive data like your banking information. That could put you at risk of identity theft. A real employer would wait until you've been hired before collecting this. A great way to confirm whether a job is real is to go to the company's website. Not every job scam is as easy to spot, but checking the source, content, pay, and request is a great place to start. The FTC notes sometimes scammers will work to lure you in, slowly obtaining more and more information from you. Whether you're Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. So it's hot outside and when you get into your car, you turn it on and then look at your dashboard and sometimes those temperatures can seem a little high. So the question, are car thermometers accurate? Let's verify. Our source is David Undercoffler, editor-in-chief at Autolist.com and car dealership Earnhard Lexus. So the short answer is no, those thermometers are actually not super accurate. Undercuffler says the reason? Because the sensors are usually close to the ground. Earnhardt Lexus states most sensors are near the front bumper. So if the sun is beating down on the front bumper, then the temperature may appear higher. So if your car has been parked on something like asphalt or blacktop for a while, there's a lot of heat radiating up off that surface into that sensor. It will usually cool down when you start to drive, but Undercuffler says the most important reason to take these temps with a grain of salt is not when it's hot, but when it's cold outside. The time you need to remember that this isn't an accurate reading is in the winter. If you're out driving and the temperature is hovering right around freezing, just because it doesn't say freezing on your uh, temperature gauge, it may actually really be freezing in reality. So just adjust your driving accordingly. So we can verify that no, car temperatures are not exactly accurate and can differ a few degrees from the actual air temperature. Fergie, been a minute. <laughs> that was Fergie opening the MTV Video Music Awards last night with host Jack Harlow. I know him. No. <laughs> in another surprise appearance, Johnny Depp, or at least a video of his face, appeared inside the helmet of the moon person, you know, MTV's moon person, hovering over the stage. He says he showed up because he needed the work. Take a look. I just want you guys to know that I'm available for birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, weddings, wakes. Any old thing you need, 
Amber Heard's sister slammed the VMAs for Johnny's appearance and said she hoped none of the people who made the call to have Johnny on have daughters. I'm not, a, I, I stood up for Johnny for a while, but I, he did some pretty nasty things that came out in the trial. Yeah, but say he even though he didn't he lose. Yeah, he did wasn't a great guy. Yeah, it still was a lot of nonsense happening yeah. between both parties. Right. So that's what we just call a draw. Okay? <laughs> so I don't understand why he's flying in like, "Oh yeah, I need to work like But MTV is known right. for doing this, right. right? So I wasn't surprised by the venue that chose to give him the platform. Yeah, that's um, because true. he did get prematurely canceled. So should he not work again is a whole other conversation that we've had like sure he should work again, but should, you know, maybe they try to handle things with a therapist next time? perhaps in his next relationship but like it's just too messy right this second yeah right now to, like make a joke out of it right like it's too soon Hashtag. I don't know if there is a thing as too soon anymore because I mean, this is I feel like this entire trial or like media frenzy sur surrounding Amber and Johnny was such a teachable moment for so many people mm -hmm. because essentially this is what happens when you go into either the court of law or the court of public opinion and neither one of you have clean hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this could be dissected and it will be dissected for years to come after this because it had so many layers yeah. between people feeling like Amber took advantage and abused the Me Too movement. Very much. To people feeling like um, they both were so much at fault for there to be a victim blaming or you know a victim shaming. It does. People feel like it falls into a different category. Yeah, they were both the aggressors. Yeah. Yeah. Point. yeah, that's interesting. And MTV made a point of who they chose with, who they sided with, with this decision. So interesting. Um, as far as the awards go, Taylor Swift, woohoo! Your favorite. That's me. Uh, picked up a moon person for video of the year. She's the only artist to ever win the award thrice, three times. She also looks stunning in this Oscar de la Renta jeweled mini dress. Lizzo also went high fashion with this blue black Jean Paul Gaultier dress. She also wore matching black lipstick and a gold lip ring. And Lil Nas X made a statement with this black feathered headpiece and matching skirt. Some say it reminded them, oh yes, of Cher's iconic Bob Mackie outfit she wore to the Oscars in 1986. And Nicki Minaj performed and picked up the video Vanguard Award. What do we think about all the outfits? What do we think about uh, <laughs> Nikki? What do we think? Any any surprises for you? Uh, Lil Nas X also, uh, there was the inspiration from Naomi, Cam Naomi Campbell for the Met Gala. Uh, Iman. Iman, oh, sorry. Yes, wore, Iman, right. sorry. And people were like, she wore it a year ago, you know, a little bit on the nose. Usually, like, 1986 to now is a good inspiration, but last year a little too seems kind of abrupt. Interesting. Well, hey, I don't think there's ever too too soon to honor a queen. You know I'm going to be wearing both of your outfits tomorrow. <laughs> You're like, all right, Tori. <laughs> uh, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye, guys.